Japan is kind of, uh... Japan is kind of going through it at this point in history. Young men want to be more kawaii, herbivore men are booming right now, nuking the birth rate, and male Japanese millennials aren't ruining their lives like they used to. But once every loop year, Japanese media finds a way to remind me that, yeah, there's probably some guy in Japan who could kick my ass. Fucking punch! Fist of the North Star has some of the most dude bro clips I've ever seen on YouTube, and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure has become a major icon in the LGBT community, proving that you can be gay without being less masculine. So, what does this intro have to do with the rest of this video? Almost nothing. Nonetheless, I found myself lost. Much like a man with amnesia, I had forgotten how to be a man, until I remembered. <laughs> and then I remembered. Garen Logan was one manly ass anime. Garen Logan takes place in a world where most of humanity has been trapped underground for so long, they've forgotten why they're there. Through a twist of fate, hope, and desperation, Simone and his big bro Kamina pierce through their underground village and discover a world they could only ever imagine. Now, this is a story that embodies the saying, Don't think, feel. I could sit here all day and list technical problems with the show, but that wouldn't reflect how it made me feel. Garen Logan made me feel hype, entertained, inspired. It also avoids what I think repels me from most mecha and anime analysis videos. It doesn't take itself too seriously. Ever wanted to see a gigantic robot blow some shit up and then strike a pose and motherfucking sunglasses appear out of nowhere? Me neither, but all the stuff like this fuses into a pleasantly upbeat atmosphere, even when not so pleasant or upbeat stuff is happening. While the show is chock full of over the top, epic robot alpha male fa- can you f stop fucking around back there? Thank you. While the show is chock full of over the top, epic robot alpha male man fights, that's not what made me click past episode one. That's just the icing on the cream pie because the plot itself had me hooked. Or subplot, I don't know. Our main character Simone is introduced as an outcast and is never too sure of himself. But no matter how far they're backed into a corner, for some reason Big Bro Kamina always relies on Simone. So I kept watching, wondering what Simone might become and how they would make the world a better place. By the end of the series, it all comes together and you realize Big Bro Kamina was right the whole time. As I was being pushed forward by the plot, all the extra stuff fell in just the right places. Like the characters. Big Bro is this combination of Dandy and Mugen, except he's never caught lacking and gets all the ladies. He's a manly man. Simone has such great development, and even though he's scared to pilot mechs in the beginning, he's not all, oh jeez, Mr. Ikari, I don't know if I can do it. They made it really easy to care about the story and where it was headed, and their relationship made the show so enjoyable for me. But funny enough, my favorite characters were the little sign people, like Gay Guy, whose whole purpose is to just make little gay one-liners, which I fucking loved. Ron is one of my favorites. It's nothing but hot young babes. What a dreadful village. Oh goodness gracious, all this stress is murder on my skin. I thought something was off so I looked it up and he's voiced by Steve Bloom. <laughs> or cute little missile guy. Don't fire the main cannon. Fire! Finally, there's comedy that actually made me chuckle a few times. Ooh! An interesting plot, a tight cast of characters, and decent comedy isn't enough? How could I forget to mention the hype? Remember the Muscle vs. Deku fight? When Deku was all like, One photo auto times one million! Watching that shit gave me chills, and for some reason, made me cry. Well, Gurren Lagann is like that every episode, only increasing in intensity as the series goes on. I felt in sync with the characters and their desires to the point where the fights going on didn't really matter to me. It was more what they were thinking and pushing for that hyped me up. So yeah, I... Tried a couple times. Anyway, in terms of art, the character design is top tier. Everyone is super unique looking, and unlike a lot of anime, you would still recognize each character even if you gave them all a different hairstyle. Did I mention that Yoko was probably the reason why I tried hentai? Huh. And then there's a color choice. Garen Lockin is always super nice to look at, super aesthetically pleasing. I love the color choice. I honestly think it owes a lot of its good looks to the color choice alone. That being said, I wouldn't say the fights blew me away. There were some cool ones, but you know. Fun fact, the co-founder of Gainax, Takami Akai, stepped down because of Japanese 4chan. When episode 1 of Gurren Lagann came out, some chick working in production stumbled upon a 4chan thread where they were calling the animation quality C-tier. So obviously the only reasonable response is to tweet, Stupid, stupid, disgusting otaku should die. Then Akai posts that reading the thread was like, Putting your face next to an anus and breathing deeply. Apparently that wasn't funny. By the time episode 4 came out, 4chan was even more pissed with the animation quality, which really means they didn't care, but they thought it was funny how mad Gainax was getting, leading the production staff lady to bust out those Twitter fingers yet again. Then, 4chan discovers Akai's anus tweets and starts bitching at him. And he's like, fuck it, I quit. So that's the story of how Japanese <coughs> 4chan bullied the co-founder of Gainax to quit his job partway through Gurren Lagann's release. All I can say is, I know that fucking guy wasn't in those COD Black Ops 2 lobbies back in the day. When everything is in sync, the characters' minds and yours are aligned, when the creators put a little extra effort into making the scene nice and beautiful, when there's a moment that you know you're gonna remember, the music crescendos right alongside the climax of whatever's happening on screen. 
Gurren Lagann is not perfect. There are more deus ex machinas in this anime than there are children in a Hispanic household. It might as well be called, eh, fuck it, the anime. A lot of the shot composition doesn't make any sense, hell, even the first 30 seconds of the anime don't canonically make sense if you finish the anime, the mechs look like they're playing laser tag, but I believe that this is an anime even the strictest stink breath karma farming neckbeard can get down with. Gurren Lagann is an anime that makes me feel. The characters' aspirations feel real, it's fun as hell to watch, and there are a few really strong messages that actually matter to me. God damn it, alright, I cried a couple times. I can't say that the anime is for everyone, but I can say that everyone who feels the same way as me will finish the anime, sit back and think, damn. What the fuck do I do now? So if you haven't watched it, maybe you've seen it floating around and thought it looked dumb, I urge you to give it a chance. I wanted to see how many people I could piss off with the title. My name's Scamboli, and it was nice talking to you. See ya.